Hi everybody, David Wesley here, and this is episode three of our virtual choir training series. This time around, we're giving Serena the boot, and don't worry, she'll be back. And I'll be delivering our first lesson on some of the technical aspects of being a virtual choir performer. In our introductory video, I mentioned that you, the singer, are the most important ingredient in a virtual choir, but a close second is your camera. So today we'll be talking about choosing the best device at your disposal and setting it up in your space. So what do I use? Good question, I'm glad you asked. Uh, the setup that you're experiencing right now is uh, one that I've used for my talking videos for the last number of years. It's similar to what I do for my acapella recordings, except I don't have my big condenser microphone right in front of my face, and my computer is not on receiving a direct audio feed from that. I've been recording on my Nikon D600 DSLR camera since 2012, it has excellent picture quality, especially when it comes to the color. And um, one downside is that it doesn't have a flip out LCD monitor. So when I need to do my lighting and color checks, when I'm trying to frame myself for a video, I actually have to mount a external LCD monitor on top so that I can see myself and not bother my wife to try to do all that stuff for me. But it is a very minor downside. So if you do have access to a DSLR camera with video capability, whether it's Nikon or Canon or Sony or Olympus or other ones that might be out there, that is the best bet in terms of video quality. We're not gonna talk about audio quality today, but in terms of how things look, DSLR is the best way to go. Other options include dedicated camcorders, uh, smartphones, one thing that I absolutely have to say no to, unfortunately, is webcams. Whether it's an external webcam hooked up to a laptop or desktop computer um, or built into your laptop computer, I'm very sorry. Most of the problems that I've had with on the technical side with people's submissions, whether it's video quality, audio quality, sync issues, is because they were recording with the webcam. So if you're stuck in a webcam is your only device, I'm really sorry, but I can't accept your submission. And I'm sorry about that. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about the ways that you can set up the preferred devices. And um, there's a couple different configurations you can use. I know now is not the best time to buy new equipment. I'm recording this during the COVID-19 pandemic. And where I am in uh, the province of Ontario in Canada, um, most, well, all the places that you could buy this kind of equipment, uh, you can only order online or go curbside pickup. And that's really hard to really hold the product in your hand and test it out before you commit to buying it. So I'm going to show you a couple of the options uh, that um, you can use for setting up equipment that you already have. Um, and we'll go from there. As I mentioned earlier, this is my setup with the DSLR camera. It's mounted on a regular tripod and the camera is at about nose level to get me straight on. Now you could go on to Amazon or other online stores and find yourself a little adapter that can attach to a microphone stand and turn it into a mount for your camera. Here you can see a dedicated camcorder comfortably mounted on top of this setup. It's also really easy to find a smartphone holder online that you can screw onto this setup or onto a regular tripod. This is a very good solution just because of how popular those devices are. So if you do have a smartphone with a great camera and you're not interested in getting these accessories, here's a low-tech way that you can actually set up for recording at a standing height. Just grab some boxes, crates, whatever you need to, stack them up to the right level, and then put two heavy books right at the very top. One to be kind of a stable base and the other one to be a swivel so you can rotate left and right. You can use a little bit of tape. I use painter's tape here to kind of create a little bit of a tent for your camera and you can swivel it around in position. And remember, the better camera is actually facing away from the screen on your phone. So you may need to do some test shots by yourself or get somebody else to aim the camera for you. So I hope that these demonstrations were helpful to you and that you now have some idea of how you want to set up your camera in your recording space. And one last thing before I go, make sure that you're setting up for recording yourself in the standing position. Uh, Serena would tell you that standing is the posture that will give you the best possible vocal performance. So set yourself up for success that way. But standing also has the benefit of, you know, making you look a little more trim. And uh, then you don't have to worry about squeezing 
squeaky chairs and whatnot. Now, if you do have a bona fide medical condition and standing is either very difficult or just impossible for you, you can still help out by making sure that you are sitting down in as solid a chair as possible, whether it's uh, metal or wood, something that's not gonna creak around. In future videos, we are gonna talk about some camera settings, uh, framing, backgrounds, lighting, all sorts of things. And uh, next time we'll be back with Serena to learn a little bit more about vocal technique. These videos are made possible by my patrons on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting the creation of these videos, you can head to patreon.com slash David Wesley, and I will see you next time.